Hello and uh, welcome. This is uh, Math for Electronics 2 and we're going to study real and complex numbers very quickly, very, very quickly uh, in this short lecture just to introduce what they are and define some notation around them so that we know what we're talking about, okay. So, first thing is let's begin with real numbers. We've seen this real line before in Math 1. Uh, you must have seen it earlier. The real line is basically the line that uh, captures all the real numbers in it. It has 0, 1, minus 1, these are the integers. And then you have a lot of numbers in the middle. You have these rational numbers which are of the form p by q, you know, half, 13 by 3, minus 7 by 2, these are rational numbers. And then you have these uh, square roots, cube roots, those kind of numbers. You know, I've shown here uh, only square root, you can have cube root, fifth root, tenth root, hundredth root, all of those things. And then you have these uh, numbers like pi and e and all that. And all of these things show up in this. Uh, real line. Okay, so this is um, the real line. I hope uh, you, you have a good exposure to this real line. And in particular, in linear algebra, we will be worried about the operations you can do with the real numbers. Okay, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Okay, so it turns out the real field as they call it is the real numbers, all the real numbers that are there along with these four operations. Okay, so this is called the real field. A field is something which is a set of numbers where you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division without going outside in some sense, okay, in a consistent manner. I know I'm, I'm oversimplifying things. There is a very proper rigorous definition for field. For our purposes, this is what we need, okay. Any field is some, some set of numbers where you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. All four you should be able to do without getting out of the set and they should all have some meaningful relationship between the other. I will define it a little bit later, but we won't be so rigorous about it. The real numbers form a field, okay. So, I hope you can see that. It turns out like for instance the integers, if you only say the set of integers, they don't form a field, okay. You can add and subtract, you can multiply, but you can't divide, right. If you divide 7 by 6, you are going to get 7 by 6, which is, you know, it is not an integer, no. You go outside of the set. But it turns out the rational numbers actually form a field. You can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So, like that, there are some numbers which form a field, some that don't. The real numbers certainly form a field and you can do all four operations. Uh, very convenient. Okay, so the real number field is something that we will use a lot and we will not introduce it that rigorously. It is uh, it's a little bit complicated to introduce very rigorously, but in math 1 we saw quite a bit about the real line and the numbers and what it, uh, what it contains. So, hopefully you have enough experience dealing with the real field. Uh, equally interesting and this, this field we will look at very, very closely is the complex numbers, okay. So, you know what the set of complex numbers is. We introduced it in math 1 as well. We will denote it as C. And uh, this is defined as x plus y i where x and y are actually real, okay. So, notice this notation r uh, that I will use for real numbers and the notation c I will use for complex numbers x plus y i we have seen before this i is this i squared equals minus 1. So, this kind of uh, uh, you know relationship it has this is uh, <coughs> this is important in the definition for complex numbers. So, to do arithmetic with complex numbers you treat a plus b i as a polynomial in i and you use i squared equals minus 1. So, this, this, is a, this is a logic to do all arithmetic and complex numbers. In particular, you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication very obviously. You know, you add a plus b i and c plus d i, you will get a plus or minus c plus or minus plus b plus or minus d i, right. That is easy enough to see. And then when you multiply, you will get a c and then b d i squared, but b d i squared is minus b d. So, that is what you get here. And then you get a d i plus b c i, okay. Just like treating it like a polynomial and multiplying out. Division is a little bit involved. It turns out, you know, if you want a number uh, similar to complex numbers with a plus b i by c plus d i, you have to multiply and divide by c minus d i. So, this makes the denominator real. It becomes c square plus d square and the numerator is some complex number, okay. So, this way you can also do division. So, complex numbers you can add, multiply, subtract, divide. So, because you can do all that, the complex numbers become a field. Okay, so this field is also very crucially important. Okay, so there are some aspects of this field uh, which uh, you can't do in real. Something that you cannot do in the real field, you can do in the complex field. Okay, so this will come uh, become very crucial for us, particularly when we start looking at eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and all. Okay, so this also is a field that you should have some good familiarity with. We've seen it earlier. You should be able to uh, comfortably deal with uh, complex numbers, complex exponential. That will show up uh, quite a bit in our uh, look at eigenvalues for some uh, related problems, okay. So, the real numbers, complex numbers, both of them form a field and that is very, uh, these two fields are, are going to be used a lot in this course, okay. 
So, these numbers we will refer to as scalars. Okay. So, before you study vectors which form, you know, the, which is vector space and vectors which form the crux of linear algebra, we are going to study, we have, we have to look at what are scalars, right. So, scalars are real numbers and complex numbers. Okay. So, these we will call as scalars. The scalars should form a field when you want to do proper linear algebra with them. So, what is a field? I briefly described what it was. You should be able to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. There are a few other criteria here which I will not emphasize too much except just defining it for you. You need to have an additive identity, right? 0 is a powerful number, isn't it? 0, you add any number to 0, you get the same number, right? So, that is called additive identity. Similarly, there is a multiplicative identity which we will denote 1. Any number you multiply by 1, you should get that same number, right? So, 0 and 1 are there, that, that is important in every field you should have 0 and 1. And then the addition should be commutative, multiplication should be commutative. What is commutative? It's basically whether you do A plus B or B plus A, you should get the same thing, which is what you do in real and complex. And AB equals BA should be there. And then there should be this distributive property, which is A into B plus C should be AB plus AC. Okay, so these, these properties are needed to make a proper field and these properties we will use, you will see when, when we do uh, operations with vectors as well. Okay, so scalars are from a field and this field in our course is going to be complex numbers, real numbers, that is it, nothing else we will look at. Okay? So, vectors will be defined over a scalar field and you can also view the scalar fields as one dimensional vector spaces, right. So, the real line is just a one dimensional thing, right. But you may argue complex is two dimension, but we will we'll take that up in a separate discussion. For now, the scalar fields are one dimensional vector spaces for us, okay. These are the simplest examples. They are very easy to deal with. They do not really show too much of this linear algebraic properties. Uh, you will see them only when the dimension goes up, you start seeing interesting uh, properties from linear algebra, okay. So, the real line is one dimensional as I mentioned, okay. So, these are the scalar fields. We will work with them in the rest of this course. Thank you very much.